Great. Thanks a lot, Gene. I appreciate it. And uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, our webinar today. We're going to be going over Pinterest, obviously. Um, and, of course, any questions, uh, you can tweet them, put them in the chat box, post them on our Facebook uh, page. And in the background is uh, Mr. Eric Granado. And a little introduction about us. We are a social media marketing agency. And you can see me on the far right in the image. That's uh, Bill DeRosa. That's me. And on the far left is my friend and business partner, Eric Granado, who in the background will be answering questions. Um, so we've got a lot to cover, so let's go on. Um, so basic facts and figures, uh, Pinterest was just launched in March 2010, so it's only a couple of years old. It was and still is invite only, uh, which is uh, generating a lot of interest just by uh, keeping it in this, this respect. Uh, 1.36 million users daily, 10.4 million registered users. Um, you can read the rest of them here, but the most interesting one is the one near the bottom. It's the third most visited social networking site in the United States behind Facebook and Twitter. It just attained that in the last couple of weeks. So the stats on this is are, are, are pretty staggering. It's, it's growing pretty rapidly, and there's a lot of people using it. Demographics, uh, most of them are female. That number that you see there, 68.2%, that was actually a lot higher just a couple of months ago. It was uh, closer to 80%. Uh, the male population is jumping on board a lot more now, so the demographics are spreading out a little bit. Average time of 15.8 minutes spent a day. Uh, that's rapidly growing. Again, uh, just a few months ago, that was uh, down to about eight or nine minutes, and it's just been taking off. Facebook, by comparison, is about an hour per day, so it's catching up to uh, the largest social network. Uh, there's a lot of interaction between Pinterest and Facebook. You can see right here, one-fifth of Facebook connected users are on Pinterest daily. Um, that's a lot of people, and this is the United, United States, by the way. 80% uh, of pins are repins, so when you're talking about uh, viral aspects or social sharing, uh, for 80% of pins to be repinned is a very high number. You don't get those kind of numbers on Facebook, for example, where it's close to anywhere between uh, you know 5% to maybe 15% if you're lucky. And 28% have an, an income higher than $100,000 a year, which is you know it's a pretty good figure there. So you have people who do have money to spend. Just a couple of little graphic image size and specs, because this is really important. It's a very visual platform. So obviously you, you need to know that the images that you're putting up there uh, need to be viewable by people in its, its largest form without anything getting cut off or distorted because Pinterest will resize. So here's some of the measurements for you. Picture is 554 pixels. Anything larger will be resized. Uh, so just do keep that in mind so your pictures don't get distorted. Uh, infographics are becoming more and more popular on Pinterest. Uh, if you don't know what an infographic is, I'm sure you've seen them, but there are these little graphics that have some facts and figures in a pretty format with some images and such. Um, and there's the, uh, the specifications for that. And although you can use up to 500 characters in a description, users enjoy shorter ones. Uh, that's pretty obvious. Be succinct in what you say on your descriptions of your images. It will attract a little bit more attention. Uh, the old rule of thumb is the more people have to read, the less likely they are to read it. Uh, so keep it succinct and to the point. Uh, one other little note that's not in here, but I will cover la later, and it's really important. The description, what you put in the description, is actually the keywords that the search function picks up on. So your description is also very important as far as having your pins be found in the search. Uh, and settle for ma using main keywords and descriptors. Um, and if you need to do any more description or you need to add to the description, add that in the comments section underneath your image. All right, so we're going to get into just the basic navigation controls. Now, for some, this is going to be simple, uh, and for others who are newer to Pinterest, uh, th this is going to be a necessary part here. So the basic functionality at the top, you have add, about, and talking. Now, the add is obvious. Add a pin, upload an image, or create a new board. You're basically adding to your own profile. The second piece is about. Basically, the about is everything you need to know about Pinterest. That's the basic home page for Pinterest. You can get in there, get the Pinterest guide, help. There's tools in there, the pin in button, a bunch of other things in there you can gra grab. Uh, also terms of service. There's also information about copyright, which uh, we'll go over a little later. And then the last one there is your profile, your profile navigation. Everything that you need in that section or about your profile is up there. So when you click on that, you can access anything about your profile that you need to. Next section right here is the basic frame of your profile. On the far left is your profile or logo, whichever one you want to use. Uh, we opt in on ours to use our, our logo, but uh, anything can go up there. 
and it's 160 by 160 pixels, and that's really important. Again, sizes on a lot of these social platforms, and especially Pinterest, are, are very important so things don't get distorted. The next little section you'll see is the social Etsy or website links. You can have up to three of them right there. And wherever you want to drive traffic or wherever you want to connect to, that's a good place to put that. Uh, we have our website, our Twitter, and our Facebook page up there. Uh, but again, you choose where that link goes to. The description is 200 characters, so you know a lot of people will write their description in Word or another program or platform where they can then measure how many words, and this is including spaces. Um, so when you're going to type out your description, uh, just make sure that you fill up as much as you can, be succinct, tell people who you are, what you do, um, and that fills that spot. Now this upper right-hand section, repins from, um, there's been a lot of talk about this as far as it's not working right, things like that. Um, and you know, honestly, if anybody has information about if they feel it's functioning correctly, please let us know too, because I could not ascertain that. And a lot of research I've been doing uh, and experiments I've been doing, that just doesn't seem to change no matter what. So it's supposed to be people you repin most often. Um, but again, anybody has any information about that, please share it with everybody because, uh, again, the more research I've done, the more answers I'm getting about it. So, <laughs> All right, next section. This is basically your little control panel right here. Far left, the boards, pins, and likes. That's your information. Those are the boards you've created. That's how many pins you've added to your profile. And that's how many images, other people's images, you have liked. So it's basically uh, kind of like the things that you've done personally. Your activity. It's the follows you've made, it's the likes you've made, and the comments. Now, the comments come into play and the likes because um, these are the people that you want to keep in touch with. So if you've made a comment and someone replies back, you want to keep track of that stuff. Uh, and like any social platform, uh, that is the essence of what Pinterest is. Even though it's a visual platform, you're doing a lot of sharing, the essence is in the engagement and conversations that you will have. Next is the board and profile editing. You can edit your profile here by clicking Edit Profile, and that will change the links. Any of the stuff above it uh, that I showed you, like your, uh, your profile logo, your links, your description, you can do it right there in the Edit Profile. And there's a little icon to the right of Edit Profile you'll see. It's, a, it's basically a little image or icon of the boards. That's where you can edit your board arrangements. So if there's certain boards that you want to prioritize, um, Pinterest reads a lot like a book, and you'll see what I mean when we get into the boards, but they read from top left to bottom right, just like a book. So your important boards should go in the upper left. And I'll give you an example. If you're going to be having a contest uh, or something like that, you're going to want to put that board in a primary location, uh, you know, in the upper left somewhere. Um, so this helps order the boards in kind of a priority kind of scale. And then the next little section is who is following you, which is the 260 followers you'll see, that's follow, who's following us. And in the 456 following, that's the people we follow. And those are both clickable. If you click on followers or following, it'll actually bring up the list of these people. Next is basically the home navigation. Now, you'll see right at the top is the word Pinterest. When you click on that, it basically brings you to uh, the pinners you follow. So pinners you follow, that's people that you have followed all. It's not just following boards. These are actual pinners that you've opted to follow all of their boards, not just a board or two. Uh, so that's the people you have followed. The everything is reverse chronological order of random pinners. Now, there's algorithms in, in Pinterest that um, I kind of like because it kind of makes it fair for everybody. It basically picks a bunch of random pinners that are active and puts up their boards or their images or pins in reverse chronological order. So there's a little bit of a fairness kind of element here that everybody kind of gets a shot at being seen uh, and connected with. The next one is videos. Now, this one is really popular uh, or gaining in popularity. When you link to some place that has a video, and especially YouTube, um, it goes in its own section here. So if you're anybody who does any kind of tutorials or um, instructions or you have fun videos, anything that you have on YouTube, um, you can link right to Pinterest, and it will go in its own section. So that's a, a handy little tab that I really like a lot and we use a lot. The next one is popular. Now these are pins with a lot of interactions. The algorithm behind getting into popular is a little, little complex and um, a lot of people still don't have a handle on it, myself included. Pinterest is, a, I think, a little hush-hush 
on really giving all the details of how you get onto the popular section right here. And I think that also helps with spam because once you know an algorithm, it's a lot easier to game the algorithm to appear in a popular. So Pinterest is all about fairness and allowing as many people as possible to get up in that. So um, the one thing I do know is to get included in the popular tab, there's a little piece of the algorithm that was escaped or maybe Pinterest let out, but don't make more than one pin per hour to any of your boards. That seems to be the, the part that kills people being able to get into populars. If they pop in one, two, three, four, five, continued on pins all in a row. Um, I get Pinterest kind of shies on it because they consider it type of a spamming, so they kind of lock you out of being able to join into the popular listings. So, um, you know, if you want, if you're going to be posting up pins and you want to try and hit that popular board right there, just space your pins out more than an hour. And in the far left is GIFs. Um, now, GIFs are great for people who have Etsy or are selling products, and we'll get into a little later what kind of products are being sell, sold right now on Pinterest. Um, but it's mostly jewelry, art, photography, uh, clothing, things like that. And I, I assume this will change in time. But to jump into that gift category, when you create a pin, you have to add a dollar sign to your description and a price. And you'll see going through Pinterest that when you click on gifts, um, all these pins have a price on them. You also have to link that image to an Etsy or a shopping cart. Um, and that way you can sell things right through here. All right, so the search function. Now, the search is better than Facebook. Uh, anybody who uses Facebook know that Facebook search is, is pretty horrific. Uh, it doesn't really bring you a lot of results. Uh, the search on Pinterest isn't that much better, um, but it's still better than Facebook. And I'll give you some little hints and, and tips here. Pins. When you search, and you'll notice in the search box at the top, I put in Whole Foods. Now, when I click on pins, the search term was in the description. Now, this was just, this is not by Whole Foods. This is somebody who in their description mentioned Whole Foods carrot ginger soup. I guess she had maybe found a recipe or uh, had, you know, used the recipe to make this. And you'll notice in the description right there, Whole Foods was used. So that search term, term Whole Foods, and I said that earlier, in the description, that's where your keywords lie. Um, so when you type in Whole Foods and click on pins, it's finding all the images that people in their description used Whole Foods. For boards, the search term was in the board name. Now, anybody can create any board titled any way they want. And if you search Whole Foods and you click on boards, you'll see this, that there's a lot of boards that people have labeled Whole Foods. Uh, and that's how the search works for boards. It's the title of the boards. Lastly is people. Uh, in this case, you can use brands, organizations. People is uh, just an all-encompassing term on Pinterest that they use for everything. But the search term was in the profile or username. Now, again, when you type in, and you can use Whole Foods as an experiment for search if you want, so you can see the results that I got. Um, you'll also notice that there were a lot of people who had Whole Foods in their title. Um, the one thing about Pinterest right now is you can name anything, anything you want, basically. So it's a little difficult right now to ascertain a specific brand. Um, so you'll notice there's a few Whole Foods, there's some like local Whole Foods distributors or uh, locations. Um, so sometimes you have to seek out who the actual main brand is behind these. All right, just some basic stuff, creating a board. Easy enough right at the top uh, where you, you – you add a pin or um, when you click on, you know, adding. Creating a board is easy. Click it, and then you can name your board anything you want. Like I said, you can name the board Whole Foods if you want. Um, so name the board whatever is relevant to the images that you're going to be placing into that board. You can pick a category if you want. The benefit about picking a category is that Pinterest is divided into categories. So if you can pick one that uh, is already pre-stated, you have a better chance of showing up uh, within that board near the top and people search for specific categories. If you can't just choose other, we actually end up choosing other a lot because we name our boards and a lot of them aren't related to any of the specific topics that Pinterest has given us. Uh, so we'll just choose other most of the time. Contributors, now contributors who can pin, this becomes important for brands using Pinterest. You can add people to add to any boards that you want. So for each individual board, 
if you want to allow other people within your company organization or even friends or anybody to add to specific boards, you click that Me and Contributors, and in, in that search box right there or that field, it says name or email address. You can either pop in their name, and the name works like anything else. Put the at symbol, and, you know, for example, I can type in at Eric Granado, and I would pull up Eric's profile if he's already on Pinterest. If they're not on Pinterest, you would add their email address, and then it would send them an invitation to join Pinterest and then contribute to that board. And then simply click Create Board. But you're not done yet, and I'm not sure why Pinterest does it this way, but you notice when you're done, there's no description on these boards. It starts up a new board, and you'll see right at the top here. You then have to click Edit Board to simply add the description of the board. Now, I'm sure in future updates to Pinterest, they'll change that so that, um, let me go back one slide, so that that piece would actually be in here rather than in its own description box that you actually had to edit to add. Uh, so for now, though, you do have to click edit. And then add your description. Tell people what this board is about. You want to make it interesting, clever, funny. Um, you know, it's social. So you got to have some kind of a little hook or a little play on words or something to get people attracted to what the board is. And then, again, just click Save Settings. And hopefully, like I said, they'll combine these two because it seems a little silly to have to edit once you've created it. Now, one of the more important aspects of Pinterest is creating links to anywhere you want. Now, you can create links to your websites, blogs, social sites. And the way you do this, there's a couple of ways. First of all, if the image is already housed on your website, um, and the one thing I will note is that you can't do this from Facebook, you'll see paste a URL. You cannot paste the URL from Facebook. It won't work. Um, so, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that after. But as far as websites you own, like your own website, there's images, uh, or if there's images you find on the net that you want to share, simply click add a pin, and it will ask for a URL. You'll simply type in or you copy and paste the URL into that box, and it will generate some images to choose from. And I'll give an example. If your website has 10 images on it and you put the URL, what will happen is um, Pinterest will come back and say, well, which image do you want to choose? So you choose the image, and you, know, you go through the regular adding a pin pieces. The other way to do this is you can upload a pin. Now, this is the one I favor a lot of times because you can create hyperlinks to anywhere you want. And we're going to talk about copyright issues a little later um, for doing this. This is generally, I, I tell people, uploading a pin should be for your own content, anything that you create, any images you create, any pictures you take. And you can create a link from any image, and this is the most flexible. I'm going to show you how to do this. All right, first thing you do is obviously on every computer, um, you know, I'm on a Mac, so for me it's easy. PCs, uh, I know it's a little crazier to find things. Eric would be able to tell you how to do it on a PC. But um, you choose a file, you, and then you pick the image. And you'll see right underneath here, upload a pin. You'll see the image I grabbed is one from my desktop. I pick the board that I want to house it on. So I pick social media marketing here. And in the description, now remember, the description, use keywords as this is the main search signal. Now, I didn't put anything relevant in this description because it was just an experiment, but uh, I typically put in the description that I want people to find in the search term. Um, and then, so that's it, and then you pin it. Now, once again, you have to click Edit. Uh, Pinterest likes to make you do two steps a lot of times. You actually have to click Edit once you've uploaded it and made the pin live on your boards. So what you actually have to do is the same as before when you had to add that description. Click Edit on the image, and it'll open up an Edit Pin Board. And then you'll see that the link is blank. You can type or paste any link that you want into there. For an example, this image that I put up there was a shot of me working on today's webinar. I posted it up onto Pinterest. I edited it. And what I put in the link was the actual link to register for today's webinar. So you'll see how powerful that is, that I can take an image, I can put it up on Pinterest, and with a little editing in the link field, I've created a live link from this image right to people being able to register for the webinar. And again, you can put any link you want there whatsoever, and then click Save Pin again. 
Now, why this is important, driving traffic, and, you know, people ask, well, you know, what's the point of Pinterest? Uh, what am I really doing with these images? If you're creative and you think a little outside the box, and in social media I like to say crush the box because uh, I don't believe the box even exists anymore. There's just too many facets to this. But you can drive traffic anywhere you want. Now, we drive most of our images to Facebook, and you'll see this is one of our analytics from uh, our Facebook right here. It's the second most uh, piece of platform or a platform out there that's driving traffic to our Facebook page. Now LinkedIn, I'm very active in LinkedIn on groups and such, and you can see right under Pinterest is our blog, our website. Um, but that's pretty powerful. Man, for just putting up some uh, images up on this platform, I'm driving a ton of traffic to my Facebook page. And like I said, most of the images that we'll put on our Facebook page that we own, again, copyright issues we'll talk about, uh, we're driving directly to our Facebook page. And we get quite a few likes from this. And the funny thing is I'm also noticing we're getting a lot of good engaged likes. Um, Pinterest seems to be driving people who like to socialize uh, some more, more so than Twitter and a couple of the other things. So I, I really enjoying the way that this is bringing traffic into our, our Facebook page. Um, our website, Eric will be able to give you some analytics on that one, which I didn't include here, but even to our website, uh, we put up infographics that then get linked to our website. Our website traffic, um, you know, it's, it's one of the top few uh, referrers to our website now. So, And that's the buzz about Pinterest. That's, that's the, the essence of what this is, is driving people, driving traffic. All right, so changing cover board or cover image. Um, right on the board, if you hover on any of your boards, you can edit the board cover. Or while you're within your boards and you look at the pins, if you hover over any image that you've uploaded, you'll see set board cover. Now, Pinterest took a little cue from Facebook on this. If you look, you know, all the new timeline images on Facebook, there's a nice cover photo that brands your page. Um, Pinterest kind of took that and ran with it and said, hey, why don't we just uh, create cover photos for each board, and that way people can kind of brand the boards. Um, so while it used to be on Pinterest that whatever the latest image that you uploaded was, was what the top image would be, now you can set it. Um, and you'll see on like social media marketing, timeline's a big thing with Facebook right now, so we made that our cover photo. But again, you could choose whatever you want to be the cover image. All right, some best practices and uses for brands. Um, focus groups, uh, contests. Contests are actually becoming a little more popular now. Um, contests were a little weak uh, just a few months ago because there wasn't enough of a user base uh, that was using it. But, I'll, you know, you saw the statistics earlier how Pinterest really jumped just in the last few months. So contests are starting to become a little more relevant because you have more of uh, a user base that would interact with your contest. Show the culture of your company create help desk and you know like you saw on our social media marketing we uh, put up a lot of pictorials and uh, links to our YouTube videos and slide shares things like that and my favorite and the way I really like to see Pinterest being used is the people behind the company uh, it's a, a chance for you to let employees spotlight themselves on your company boards so there's a lot of a lot of uses that you can actually uh, have for Pinterest and we'll get into some more of these when we uh, look at some some um, companies that are using Pinterest well the essence, of course, on Pinterest is still be social. Uh, it's a social site. So you need to be involved. You know, anybody who uses Pinterest's, you know, traditional marketing or like a website where they think they're just going to create a Pinterest and a account or profile and expect they're going to get windfalls of engagement, it's just not going to happen. Uh, you have to be social for people to accept that you're being social. Um, so some of the things you need to do, repin. And again, um, I'm looking at the screenshot and this was just from clicking on everything uh, at the top. Remember before earlier I said, you know, to, to go to basically all the users, you can click on everything or you can Pinterest uh, or uh, pinners that you follow. But, you know, I look around, I find interesting or funny stuff or things that uh, I like on, on the boards. And repinning them, this will allow you to pin it to any of your boards. So if I like this image right here that I found, I can click repin and then, 
Pinterest will give me the opportunity of where do you want to put this? Which board do you want to put on it? Now, this one, obviously, I would add to one of my uh, my funny boards. I have a board up there that's, uh, you know, well, things like this, comics and such. So uh, repinning it, uh, liking it. Liking it doesn't do anything onto your boards. It simply just adds to your likes. If you remember earlier at the top of your profile, there is the likes. Um, this will simply list it. By clicking like, it's going to be listed in there. And it does create a link to this image so that people, uh, when they go through what I like, can click on it and see it as well. And then comment. Comment is the most powerful piece. It is the essence of social communication. So if you want to really start using Pinterest well and you want to get some engagement, comment on some stuff. Uh, nice and simple. Like in this one, I just put, ha ha, I love it, because um, I thought it was funny. Uh, be real, be honest. Don't try and fudge comments if you really don't have anything to say. Don't just make something up. This one I thought was funny, so I commented on it. Uh, now, you don't have to comment on, comment on every single image you see. Um, that's just a little silly. Comment on things that really are relevant to you, you find funny, interesting, things like that. Now, regardless of the action you take, repin, like, or comment, that person is notified via email that you took that action. So when I repin this, the person who posted it up there will get notified. If I like it, they will be notified. If I comment, they will be notified. And it's all done via email. Regardless of what I do, they get an email saying, Talking Finger has liked your post, or uh, liked your image, or uh, Talking Finger has commented on your image. And it even in the email tells them what I said. So now they can go back and comment back to me. All right, some other things to help you, Facebook plugins. Now, it's a snapshot of our Facebook page, and you'll see that we added this app here. It's a Pinterest app. Um, some of them are free. The free ones are a little dodgy as far as they kind of just feed things, and they don't have a lot of uh, interaction. It's basically whatever is the latest ones you've posted up get here. Some of the more powerful ones that you pay for, and they're anywhere from, you know, $15, $20 a month, uh, 15 or $20 a year to, you know, 30 or 40 dollars or more um, but they're all, in, all inexpensive enough that it's silly not to add it to your Facebook page it gives a portal to your Pinterest and you'll see right at the top um, on the right hand side image right at the top it says follow me on Pinterest people can simply click on that and follow us um, there's also navigation tools might be a little hard for some of you to see but uh, to the far right upper corner there's three gray boxes and that's how people can um, determine how they want to sort my images or boards to look at them. And this is all done right within the framework of Facebook. Um, of course, they can follow me on Pinterest and then click and go to my boards. But it's a nice little way to uh, have people connect with uh, my Pinterest boards from my Facebook audience and vice versa. Some other tools, um, there's a website address at the top there, Pinterest.com about goodies the buttons that you can use, etc. The Pin It Browser button, this is a great tool. I, I put it in my browser bar. By adding this to your browser bar, as you search the web or you go around, it's a simple button that you click and it will pull up any images from the current website or page that you're on. And again, it'll let you choose. Now, with this, again, be careful about copyright issues. Make sure you're not infringing on anything that you're, uh, you're taking that you shouldn't be pinning up on your board, things like that. And again, we will cover that a little later. I have a section on, on this. Uh, follow button, put this on your website. This is the same as, I'm going to go back one slide, sorry. Right here at the top, it says follow me on, on Pinterest right here. You can add that to your, and that's the follow button. You can add that right to your website. You can add it to anywhere. It's a simple little plug-in that um, Pinterest gives you that you can place anywhere. So you can put it on your blog, your website, anything. And the last one on the bottom here is pin it button for websites. Now, that's one to use for specific images. It's a little icon that goes next to any images that you want, and it simply allows you to just pop that image up onto your board, uh, it allows other people, I'm sorry, to take that image and put it on their boards. So all these tools, you're really allowing people to come into your world and share the things for you. People love finding new images, things that are interesting, funny, all this stuff, uh, educational. So if you give them these, these buttons and such that they can use, it will really help spread the word about your Pinterest uh, profile. Now, how does Pinterest make money? Can we pay to advertise? Previously, and I'm going to let you read this, but in short, 
Um, Pinterest was making money off of all the Etsy purchases. Uh, remember a little earlier I showed you by adding a dollar sign and a, a hyperlink to an Etsy or website, you can actually sell product over Pinterest. Well, Pinterest was previously using uh, a service called skimlinks.com. And basically, it was an affiliate program where if somebody purchased something through Pinterest, or connected from Pinterest to their Etsy, um, Pinterest would get a little slice of it. They've since stopped that. The latest policy, and again, you can read this yourself, but um, basically, they stopped doing that, and they've uh, secured venture capital funding, things like that. Uh, because they grew so fast, there were so many people willing to give them money and obviously invest in the company that they no longer had to do the skim links or, or that type of stuff. So they've stopped it. Um, but the last line here in his quote uh, is the interesting part. Even though making money isn't our top priority right now, it is a long-term goal. So be on the lookout for paid advertisement opportunities in the future. It's funny because Gene and I had a conversation when we were talking about making a Pinterest uh, webinar. Um, we had this conversation where I was almost adamant a month ago saying, I don't think Pinterest is ever going to allow paid advertising. Uh, they make money off the skim links, things like that. And I've since changed it. Since this quote came out, it wasn't too long ago he, he made this quote. Um, I've changed my stance on it a little bit. I, I think maybe there will be opportunities in the future. So just keep an eye out about it. If we come across anything, obviously, uh, we'll break that news as well. All right, so copyright issues and protecting your own assets. Um, some suggestions for you. If anything that's important to you, watermark any of your images. Um, be sure all images you own are linked back to your website, blogs, social profiles. And that's why I feel it's important, uh, you know, that image I showed you earlier of, you know, screenshot, which, you know, isn't that important, but some of the other assets we have there, I'm always making sure that we're backlinking back to our Facebook page or our website or our Twitter um, just so that the link is there. And put your logo or name in a corner of the image, um, you know, just as much as you can protect yourself with these. All right, now when you want to use images, don't change URLs of images that aren't yours. They always must link back to original source. So in other words, if you come across a cool image from, on someone else's website, uh, most of the time it's okay to pin it to yours. And when you pin it to yours, the um, link that will come along with it is already inherent in the image. Uh, Pinterest already picks up on that. Don't go into that field and edit that link. You remember how I showed you earlier that you can edit web links? Don't do that. If you're repinning something, don't ever change that URL so that it points to some entity or website or social site of yours. That would be a major boo-boo. Uh, don't block out or modify watermarks, copyrights, logos, any identifying marks on any images. Don't bring it to Photoshop. Don't change it. Leave all that stuff on there. And when in doubt, don't use it. If you really think that you might be infringing on someone's copyrights, simply don't use it. Uh, go find another image. It's not important enough um, to be worried about that you're infringing on copyrights. And there, there's, you know, if you're not sure, just don't do it. I'm not a copyright expert. There's attorneys that specialize in this stuff. There's also a very good description in the uh, help section of Pinterest with copyright stuff. They go into a little more detail. Uh, for bigger brands, bigger brands have lots of attorneys that look at everything that they pretty much put on the on the web. Um, you know, some of us smaller companies like us, and you know, a lot of small business, we don't have that luxury of having an attorney. Um, so, you know, do as much research as you can. It's that's the best I can tell you. But just be careful. All right. So, who does it well? Uh, and I have a few reasons for showing the, the following slides here. Whole Food Mark, Whole Foods. Um, they have a great combination of food boards, obviously, um, but as well, they, they put things there related to food, kitchens, health, art, even their charity. Um, you know, they have some uh, great kitchens, super hot kitchens. Now, what does that have to do with food? Well, it's a kitchen. You cook food in kitchens. So they've opted to put up some pictures of some pretty cool modern kitchens, some country kitchens, things like that. Um, you'll also see they have delicious art on there. So it's, you know, how people turning food into art things like that. So, you know, when you think about Whole Foods Market uh, previously, what the heck would they put up on Pinterest? Pictures of groceries, things like that. But again, they're thinking outside the box. They're thinking about what kind of topics they can create with their boards to entice people, to entice different people to connect with their brand. Auric, a vacuum cleaner. I mean, 
realistically, think about it. You're not looking at this board right now and think in your head, Auric, what would, what would Auric put up on a Pinterest board? Well, stunning floors. I mean, they're vacuums. They deal with a lot of floors. So they actually came up with a board here that actually has some pretty cool flooring people have installed in their homes. One, of, one made of pennies. Uh, there's another one there made of old bamboo, things like that. Really cool. Very friends. They, they're putting pictures, or and they're even asking people to submit pictures of their pets. Why? Well, what's probably one of the mo number one reasons you have to vacuum? If you have a cat or a dog, I have a couple of cats. Um, I know I got to vacuum continually because of the cat more than anything else. Um, so you know they're putting relatable boards in there that are interesting. Um, you know, craftastic, which maybe has nothing to do with with vacuums and such, um, but they're thinking outside the box. They're trying to attract people to their brand. Peapod. Now, the one I really like here is the delivery trucks. Um, the delivery truck board humanizes the company, gives us a little behind the scenes. Um, you know, film school, everybody learns Wizard of Oz. What's the, what's the whole point of the Wizard of Oz is the guy behind the curtain. That's the whole point of the movie. Um, so the delivery trucks board, for example, gives us a little behind the scenes. What do these drivers actually go through? Uh, so they have their drivers submitting them images, photos of, of their route, uh, it's getting stuck in the snow, things like that. It, it's cool. Um, you know, they also did favorite foodie movies. You know, you think about food. Well, what movies are related to food? Um, so they made a board for that. Um, they put up their charities up here. So there's a lot of things that you can do outside the box um, that will, will connect people to your brand. And, you know, we have some questions later on, and actually someone actually asked a very good question. Well, how do I, you know, how do I connect a bank to people? Who the heck what would a bank put up on Pinterest? And I'll actually answer that in a little while. Uh, and in our board, you know, uh, I hate putting our board up there, but we're inspired by others. I look at a lot of other boards, and I look at what's working, what's not. And, you know, our first board, social media marketing, well, that's, a, you know, what we do kind of board right there, the help and everything else. But you'll also see I put Bill DeRosa and Eric created a board, and, and our two employees created boards. We're letting people connect with our brand. We're letting people connect with our individuals. We're showing our personalities. So, you know, that type of thing can work for almost any business. Uh, you know, you have a small attorney attorney's office uh, or you have a small small business, well, have some of the people within your organization add some boards and let their personality show through. People do business with people they know, so if you can let people know the people behind your business, you, you have a better chance of engaging with them. All right, and that's about it for the presentation. Uh, what I'm going to do now, if that's okay with everybody, okay with Eugene, is um, people submitted a bunch of questions. I'm going to go through them. And obviously any other questions, uh, submit them. But there were some really great questions here, and I'm going to get into them. Uh, all right, so the first question submitted was, how big of a problem is spamming on the site? And I have to say it's actually not bad. I have not seen much spamming at all. Um, because it's user generated, spam simply doesn't go too far. So, for example, if I really want to spam a board and I throw a bunch of pictures up there, uh, you know, hoping that somebody's going to do something with it, it's not going to go anywhere because no one's going to like it, no one's going to repin it, no one's going to comment on it. Well, you might get a comment, uh, you know, to call you a spammer. Um, but it, it just doesn't seem like spam can go very far. So, I don't think spammers really pinpoint Pinterest as much as they do Twitter or things like that. There's also the algorithms in place. Remember I told you the, the ability to get onto the popular board is something that drives a lot of brands. And because of that rule of thumb that uh, don't make more than one pin per hour, it helps cut down on the spam. All right. So the next question, I'd like to know how businesses are using Pinterest to reach potential customers. Um, really, just by being social. This is no different than Facebook, Twitter, and any other social site. It's the being human. It's the interacting. Um, it's the connections. The bonus is, since it's built of images, people tend to share these. There's not that stigma uh, like on uh, some other sites. You know, people don't share as much on Facebook as they do on Pinterest, simply because um, a lot of things on Facebook are connected to text. Uh, and feelings and thoughts, whereas Pinterest, it's really just visual. So people do um, share it a lot more. Um, so reaching potential customers, it's really just about being social. It's like any other social site. Um, how, does, how does it benefit small businesses? What analytics, if any, are available? 
and how does Pinterest compare to Facebook as far as benefits to a company? Um, how does it benefit small business? Well, we're a small company, and you can see how much traffic is driven to our Facebook page, for example, or our website. Many businesses we, we work with also love Pinterest because it's, it's relatively easy to come up with content compared to a lot of other sites where you really have to have a description and links and all this other stuff. Um, so it's simple, and, and you know these images are worth a thousand words. So it's really easy to come up with content more or less if you, if you think a little bit about what you want to put up there. As far as analytics, analytics, uh, to honestly, they're a little weak right now. There is no analytics on Pinterest, but there's some outside analytics. Pinnerly is one of them. That's probably the best one. It's P-I-N-E-R-L-Y, Pinnerly. Uh, that one gives you some good, uh, good, good analytics as far as days and times of, of when you should share, things like that. Um, a rumor is analytics are going to be added to Pinterest in one of the next upgrades to the platform, so do be aware that it will happen. But for now, you can use Pinterly. And realistically, I, I love looking at how much uh, traffic is driven to our website. Okay, so next question. How are the big hitters using Pinterest? What can we do organically and paid advertising? How are we going to measure our success? Um, they're using it various ways, but in similar ways. I showed you Auric and such. Boards about who they are, what they do, and then related boards. Auric with pets, Whole Foods with kitchens, Peapod showing behind the scenes. Keep in mind, what the big brands do, though, only translates so far. Um, you have to sit and think about what you want to show on Pinterest. It's still early in the game. <coughs> Excuse me. So experiment. You know, one of the things I see is not enough people experiment on social social sites, and I think it's a shame. Uh, out of all advertising and marketing, this is the mo most fun because there really are no rules beyond the basics of don't hard sell anybody. Um, so, you know, experiment a little bit. See what works for you. Um, as far as measuring success, like I said, um, it's done easily by looking at traffic right now. Uh, you can use Pinterly, but there's not a lot else. Um, so what you want to look at is uh, advocacy, brand awareness, how many people are, are commenting, liking, repinning your stuff. Um, you know, those are the hallmarks that you'll need to go by for right now. All right, great question here. When are brand, page, when are brand pages going to launch? What will they look like, and what will their functionality be? Now, as far as I know, there are no plans to have specific brand pages launched in the, ne in the near future. Um, then again, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of these grew as user sites first, then went on to create business aspects from them. Um, if they do launch branded pages, we will be on top of it to let you know. But as far as I know, like I said, nothing in the works as far as I've read and, and, and researched on it. Next question, how are agencies, brands handling copyright issues when creating boards on Pinterest? Now, I went over that a little bit, but just carefully. Um, as an example, our own page, as careful as we are, we have 500 some odd pins. For all I know, we could have one or two pins that somebody could say something about. So you have to just be as careful as you can. Um, the way I look at it is create as much of your own content as you can. Take your own pictures. Create your own graphics. Uh, do as much of that as you can. And then just try and follow the simple rules I spelled out. Don't change. Don't edit people's images, things like that. Um, if you're really that concerned, uh, seek out the advice of an attorney for you know a short time, an hour or something, uh, if you really want to get into it. And again, look at the terms of service uh, for copyrights and such on the Pinterest help board. Next. Um, Let's see what this one is. All right, this is a really good question as well. How do I get my clients followed on Pinterest? What kinds of things should my clients be pinning? Is there any kind of tracking, which I've gone over, metrics? I Really, by generating good content, you get followed. Everything has to do with your content. That's the essence of social networking. Now, the other thing is, remember I said earlier, repinning interesting and related content content that you like that you find in other people's boards, liking their stuff, commenting on their images. It's a social site. I just can't stress that enough. It's not build it and they will come. It's engage and they will come. The biggest mistake I see with all social networks is people put up platforms uh, and they think of it like a website of traditional media that people are just going to come running in. It's not like that. You need to engage. 
um, the problem, of course, is it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, so it's a long-term engagement. Uh, we're also used to a lot of traditional advertising where you put something out in print and you get kind of immediate response. You do that trade show and you get immediate response. This is more long-term. Uh, next, how can an advertiser utilize Pinterest? How can a brand include Pinterest in a social media strategy? Um, I went through a lot of how you can utilize it, but as far as in including it in a social media strategy, I'm going to give you a couple little tips and tricks here. Tweet out your own boards or pins once in a while. In other words, everything has a unique URL. Your boards have a unique URL. Each one of your pins have a unique URL. Tweet them out every once in a while. I'll give you a really good example. Uh, I watch a show called Game of Thrones on HBO. We happen to have, by my uh, creation, a Game of Thrones board on our, on our Pinterest. So Sunday, when the Game of Thrones, an hour or two before Game of Thrones is going to be shown, I'll tweet out our Game of Thrones board and, board and hashtag it. Uh, I think it's Game of Thrones as a hashtag or something like that. But I'll hashtag it, tweet it out, and drive people to my Game of Thrones board. So I'm taking something that people connect with on the outside world, and because I'm interested in it and I want to connect with people that are interested in it, I'll actually tweet that board out. Same thing like um, Jeep. You know, I have a Jeep board on in there because me and Erica both really into Jeeps. Um, well, every once in a while, I'll tweet out our Jeep board, and I'll hashtag it Jeep. So, you know, as far as Twitter, that's one way. Um, use that, um, the Pinterest plugins for your websites. Use the Pinterest plugin from your Facebook page, um, things like that. Your website um, should have a follow us on Pinterest if you're really going to add it to your marketing that way. Um, pop your YouTube videos up on Pinterest. Um, there's a lot of different ways. So adding it to your social media strategy is really about incorporating it into the things that you normally do anyway, all right? Hopefully that answers that because that's a, that's a big, important question. I hope I answered it well enough for everybody. Um, all right, next question. We need to be able to talk to our clients about Pinterest and how businesses can use it in their social media mix. What are Pinterest strengths and weakness, weaknesses? Client mix is broad ranging from B2B, retail, CPG. How do they use it to grow their business and future their brand? Really great question. Um, strengths of Pinterest, there seems to be less stigma in sharing uh, images than, say, a Facebook post. I went over that a little bit easier, uh, sorry, a little bit earlier, that um, there's less of a stigma, stigma of sharing a simple image. Uh, than a whole post on Facebook. So it does allow, that's one of the strengths I see. Um, it's also an open network, so you don't need permission to follow anyone or comment or like anything. So because of its openness, you can really connect with a lot of different people, brands, things like that. Uh, you can get in front of people this way. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, client, the question also said client mix is broad ranging from B2B to retail. You know, one of the things, and I'm an old ad marketing guy for over 20 years now, what I'm seeing with social is, not so much things broken down to B2B and retail and all these different terms that we've used in the past. Um, I'm starting to see that this, the end result is that there's a human at the end that makes buying decisions. Uh, there's a human that you're connecting with. Um, I think all types of businesses, regardless of what they are, B2B and anything else, uh, need to start accepting that it's the humanization of business social platforms. In the end, it's a human that decides to buy or connect. So to get that human however you can and engage, um, if they're on Pinterest, you can connect with them that way, Facebook, things like that. Social lets you do this like never before where things were very segmented. Um, so, you know, I, I'm really starting to see that, uh, that whole shift. Uh, next, how can you leverage Pinterest? Next question. How can you leverage Pinterest for media use? Does Pinterest plan to incorporate advertising? Um, as far as media use, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what you mean specifically by that, but um, if you have videos on YouTube, like I said, you can just use that link from YouTube video, put it on, add a pin on Pinterest, and bam, you have a video on there. Um, besides video, I know most media uses some kind of visual. Put those visuals up on the boards and link them back to the article, or link them back to the white paper, or link them back to wherever you want. Remember, as long as you own content and it's your visuals, you can link that visual to anywhere you want. So. 
find an image that speaks to what you know is related in the media and then now link it back to that media so it's it's a good way to do it so just be creative um, as far as does Pinterest plan to incorporate advertising uh, you remember that last line by Ben Silverman the owner of Pinterest even though making money isn't our top priority right now it is a long-term goal so yeah I mean in the future there probably will be paid advertising uh, opportunities right now not right now it's organic and I strongly suggest start building that organic because once they have paid advertising the people who are more likely likely to buy are people who have been along with you on this journey already who can be advocates for you that you were here before it was a money-making opportunity type thing so humanize yourself now and worry about the paid advertising later um, next question uh, how can businesses leverage, and I only got like three more questions, so stick with me here. I'm almost done. Um, how can businesses leverage Pinterest legally and morally without immediately turning them off with an advertising feel? Great question. Uh, by not selling, by not being all about me. The good boards that I showed you don't talk about themselves. Whole Foods doesn't tell you directly they carry apples, but they'll have recipes for apple pies. They'll have people submitting images to them to then post on to uh, their boards about the, the latest uh, recipe they made or um, things like that. Oryx sells vacuums, but you don't see a Pinterest board of their vacuums up there. They show you cool floors and pet pics, things related to the vacuum, but not directly selling. Um, Think about that mentality. It's almost like, uh, I don't want to say it's sneaky. That's completely not the right word that I'm, I'm looking for. But it's a, it's a way to do it on the side. You're, you're still kind of selling people, but not directly. It's not a hard sell. Um, as far as um, legally and morally, again, simply just common sense. Don't, don't change things. Don't, don't claim things as your own. Just be careful what you reap him. Uh, two more questions, that's it, and this one's a really good one. Uh, we develop integrated brand and retail strategies in a wide range of categories. I'd like the presentation to emphasize integration of P Pinterest in media plans and in categories that are not as adaptable, such as banking, insurance, automotive. Um, there are categories that obviously lend themselves to Pinterest and others that don't, uh, which is a great question. Uh, and I'm going to focus on banking. Uh, they said, you know, how, do you, how would a bank use uh, Pinterest? Um, I think almost, and my answer is, I think almost any business, no matter what it is, can be clever and use social platforms, including Pinterest. It's outside the box thinking. The one industry we simply can't help that uh, we've come across, no matter what, is financial planners. You simply can't help because they're just not allowed to say anything. Besides them, a bank, um, geez, a bank can put up pics of the best piggy banks, you know, the odd piggy banks, things like that. They can post pictures of nice homes. Um, they can put a board up about maybe coin collecting. Um, not going to give you all my secrets because I, I do have a ton of things that a bank can do, but think about things related to a business. A bank is money. So what is money? What can it buy? Um, where do you put your money in? How do people save their money? Think about images and boards you can create related to banking that aren't necessarily banking. Um, you know, I say in social media, think outside the box, but it's more rather crush the box and recycle it the way you want to. Um, that box thinking is old school. Crush it, recycle it, and uh, it's no longer a box anymore. It's the world. Last question. Can Pinterest be used for brands that don't sell products? Um, if so, please share some examples. Yeah, I mean, you know, this one's a little tougher if you don't sell products, but you sell services. Well, we ourselves don't really sell products. We do sell mostly services, uh, you know, social media strategies, things like that. So we're not selling products per se. We're sell selling um, services. But, again, think about it outside the box. Um, you know, a bank really doesn't sell a product per se. Uh, it's selling a service more or less. But you think about relatable. Everything that you do on Pinterest, think about relatable boards that you can build. Uh, and it's as sim simple as that. And that's all I have for questions. I hope I answered as many. Um, any questions that you have, please tweet them. Go right to our Facebook page and feel free to post them right up on our wall. Um, tweet them, whatever you want to do. And uh, Gene, uh, Mike, I think I am set.